In celebration of my completion of Cold Steel 4 concluding the Erebonian arc and bringing my total of Trails games played up to 9, I decided I wanted to do a top 10 for this occasion. Not your everyday top 10 favorite characters list though, I wanted this list to be something special, something specific to Trails. One of my favorite aspects about Trails is its character writing, and specifically how it improves and deepens characters over their time in the series. Quite a few characters I really like now did not start out that way, and no other video game series manages to make me like characters I previously was neutral towards or even disliked at the same rate as Trails does. This phenomenon is partially due to timing since I spend more time with Trails characters than any other video game characters, but I also think it's a unique talent of Falcom's writing that manages to give these characters earned character development that brings out their best aspects. I want to celebrate those characters, Falcom, and the Trails series in general in this video, and I hope you sit back and enjoy after these warnings and guidelines for the video. Firstly, spoiler warning for all of Trails in the Sky and Trails of Cold Steel. There will be no spoilers for Crossbell, however. Originally there would have been, but when I actually constructed the list, no Crossbell characters made it, so I decided to make it spoiler free for the Crossbell duology. The reason no Crossbell characters made it is due to the rules I set for myself with this list. Rule number one, the character has to be playable at some point in the series. And rule number two, they have to be a character that I was either neutral to or disliked upon first impressions. There are so many characters I like to begin with that I only love more now that I've gotten to know them better. If I had included them, it would have made this list even harder to make. The purpose of the list is to celebrate how Falcom can develop characters to become favorites even if they started out lower on the character ladder, and including characters I already like to begin with doesn't suit that purpose. This second rule is what took out all of the Crossbell major characters since I liked most of them to begin with. The order of the rankings here is loosely based on how big a jump they've made from first impression to my opinion now. This list is completely my opinion, and is only about character, not about utility in-game. Them's the rules that I just made up. And now, before you get bored and click away, let's get started with number 10, Milliam. Milliam starting off this list is perfect because she illustrates some of the reasons why I changed my opinions on many of these characters over time. Firstly, the move from antagonist to ally, although that's kind of debatable in Milliam's case if she was even an antagonist to begin with, but she wasn't working with the cast at first, so I can still count it. And secondly, the establishment of strong bonds with characters in the rest of the cast. Upon first meeting, Milliam didn't make a strong impression. She was the kid of the group, and didn't have a lot else to give her depth. Milliam, upon arriving at Thor's to join Class 7, latched on to Eusis almost immediately, and the Bright Sunshine one following the aloof one around is a goldmine of comedy and fun. To be fair, that's pretty much Milliam's character role, not just with Eusis, but also Claire and Altina too. Sure, it could get overplayed at times, but Milliam gradually helping Eusis open up and develop a solid friendship was great to watch. Milliam was also the one who broke down crying at the end of Cold Steel 2 in a remarkably affecting scene, showing how she had grown to really be a part of Class 7. In Cold Steel 3, the process of opening up an emotionally stunted character happened again with Altina to great success as well, and then Falcom decided to rip our hearts out and kill Milliam off, although this is Trails so we knew that wasn't going to stick. While Milliam's relentless positivity was clearly the driving force of her personality, she did undergo development of her own, becoming more self-assured and showing moments of actual honest introspection about her past and her torn loyalties. This development ultimately culminated in her heroic sacrifice in the Grawl of Erebos and gave a lot of emotional weight to that scene and the events of Cold Steel 4. Milliam's ability to bring light to people's lives is not nearly to the same extent as, say, Estelle, but Milliam's powers to get people to open up to her serve to better not only their characters but Milliam's as well by showing her determination and caring. That is how she made the transition from a character I was kinda neutral to, to one I definitely like. Number 9, Duvali. Started out as an enemy and now she's here. I first met Duvali the Swift in Cold Steel 2 as one of the lower level Ouroboros enemies. 
She didn't stand out too much apart from being exasperated because she had to work with Boublon or McBurn, and honestly, as fun as those characters are, I would hate to have to try to complete a project with them too. So I get you, Duvali. Other than that though, she was simply unremarkable, not having much impact on me, which started to change come Cold Steel 3. It was clear in that game that she was starting to have second thoughts about what Ouroboros was doing in their actions and dealings with Chancellor Osborne. This caused a moment of crisis for her upon the destruction of the Crimson Wings, as she got a front row seat to the lengths they would go to in order to win. This slow build-up made her transition into becoming a somewhat unwilling helper of the party at the beginning of Cold Steel 4 all the better, and she quickly started a fun dynamic with Class 7. Her training with Laura, standoffish nature with Reen, and continued exasperation at Class 7's actions – clearly she can't catch a break with who she works with – made her an excellent addition to the cast in my opinion. Plus, her inclusion really helped set up the tragedy of Leanne Sandlot's death too, and gave her a really focused role afterwards trying to live up to that legacy. I don't know if she's going to feature much moving forward, but I hope she is because I grew to really like her and honestly the Trail series needs a character to play the straight woman sometimes. Duvali is one of the best at that role in the series given all the practice she's gotten thus far. Number 8. Emma with the old Class 7, I felt like I wasn't able to get a good handle on many of them in Cold Steel 1. I had my favorites such as Elisa, Laura, and Fee early on, but others took time for me to understand and get into. Emma was one of those characters for me. Clearly a nice person, but I used Elliot or Elisa as my main healer so she wasn't in the party, and her few character moments didn't draw me in at first. Cold Steel 2 changed that as I started taking a chance and doing some of her bonding events, and I think that's where Emma really shines early on with her one-on-one -on -one interaction with Reen. That, coupled with the revelation of her witch identity and the chance to develop her relationship with Selene and Vita in Cold Steel 2, gave Emma much more to work with in the sequel. By the time she began assuming more responsibility and control for the clan in 3 and 4, she was already fast becoming a solid all-around character. She had great emotional moments, starting for me with the boat scene from Cold Steel 2, and while I am, of course, pro Elisa and Reen, I still enjoyed the romantic moments between Reen and Emma too because of the lengths she would go to for the people she loves. I also like that she got more comedic moments, not related to her boobs, in later games as the serious one in contrast to Vita and definitely Rose in Cold Steel 4. She doesn't have a wild journey as a character, but you can see just how much she matures and gains in confidence over the four Cold Steel games, and that development made me really like her. She may never rank as one of my favorites, but that doesn't mean she isn't a very likable character that grew on me in spite of my initial lukewarm reaction to her. Number 7. Agate There were a few characters on this list who got their initial bad impression because I don't like characters that are mean to characters I like, and this is what initially got me off on the wrong foot with Agate. Sure, Joshua and Estelle were naive, and Agate was far more skilled and competent than them at the moment of introduction, but that doesn't mean he needed to act like such a jerk to them, especially to Estelle. In his subsequent interactions, he did grudgingly start giving more respect to them and learn to soften more. This was especially the case once he met Tita. Before Tita, Agate was a skilled professional who didn't have time for feelings and helping out those who want to follow in his footsteps. At least, that's the persona he put on. After Tita, his softer and more protective, caring side comes out, and we understand more of why he is the way he is. He becomes more open about his history, and in doing so helps himself move past it, developing a surrogate brother-sister relationship with Tita and helping steer the Ravens back onto the right path. He also has been excellent for comic relief as the straight man dealing with the antics of the Brights, the Russells, and Ouroboros without losing the drive scene in Sky's second chapter as he tries to measure up to Luve. All in all, this skilled but standoffish bracer became a lot more developed during Sky's second chapter and every subsequent appearance taking him from a character I initially disliked to one I respected and related to in many of the crazy situations he finds himself tangled in. The only thing that could possibly ruin that is if they try to couple him up with- Oh. Oh dear. Falcom, no. Stop. I hope I don't have to revisit this entry. Number 6. Ash. Despite my earlier conditions, there are very few characters on this list that I started out disliking. Ash is one of those few. 
I understand what they were going for with his abrasive attitude and continual dismissal of Reen, but to me in Cold Steel 3, he came off as a thick-headed, mean, ticking time bomb. Ash was basically a teacher's worst nightmare of a student. I don't like mean characters, but there were hints that he had more to him, and kudos to Reen, but Ash's continued remarks never seemed to get to him. Then came Cold Steel 4. After going through some bad stuff, let's say, following the curse forcing him to attempt to assassinate the Emperor, Ash is met by the rest of Class 7 in Hommel. Altina, Kurt, and Yuna's confrontation of him in Hommel I think showed Ash at his best in my opinion. His interactions with new Class 7 is what redeemed him for me, allowing him to show hidden depths of insight while remaining the brash kid he was before. After this point, Ash, while maintaining his abrasive attitude, has a lot more likability to me and genuine connection to the people around him. He maintains a role acting as a check to all the Reen praise, but doesn't accomplish this by being outright rude like he was in Cold Steel 3. He saves that for his enemies, who deserve it much more. His continued push to both find out about his past, while also establishing that who he was now was the punk from Raquel not the orphan from Hommel, and that's a compelling arc, trying to find your way and your identity in the circumstances surrounding him. Ash got the opportunity to show that he cared about his hometown, about Class 7, about Tatiana, I ship it, and ultimately doing the right thing. Falcom managed to write him this way without sacrificing the things that made him unique from the previous game. Whether this was their intention all along, I'm thankful Cold Steel 3 Ash grew up into Cold Steel 4 Ash. Ash's development turned him from dislike to enjoyable breath of fresh air among the sometimes redundant Cold Steel cast, and I think the Erebonian cast and New Class 7 specifically is better for it. Number 5, Eusis. Speaking of formerly abrasive characters who turn out to have strong caring souls, we have our resident noble and an absolute gem of a character, Eusis Alberea. Starting out in Cold Steel 1, he was snobbish and dismissive of many of Class 7, and his arguments with Machias were a bit tedious at times, even if it did make sense given the socio-political nature of the country. He was one of the characters that I sadly passed on doing bonding events for early on, so I lost some opportunities to get to know him earlier, but his true nature started shining through in Cold Steel 2. Faced with his father's crimes and Rufus going along with it, Eusis made a bold choice to oppose them alongside Class 7. Despite being a noble, nothing easy comes to Eusis as the youngest bastard son of the head of the Alberea house. I really think that Yusuf's connection with another out-of-place noble son and Reen then makes a lot of sense. Yusuf continued his rise in my esteem in Cold Steel 3 for his competence, his voice of reason of the group role, his amazing relationship with Milliam, and his obvious caring for everyone around him. Cold Steel 4 only continued this with him fighting through the heartbreak of Rufus's actions in Milliam's death. I don't care how hard your heart is, Yusuf's reaction to everything involving Milliam from the end of Cold Steel 3 to Cold Steel 4 will pierce even the most thickly defended heart. Yusuf fits Class 7 so well, and as with many of the characters on this list, he got his chance to shine when he was paired with equally strong characters either in opposition, like Rufus, or in support, like Reen and Milliam. The Trail series is blessed with this serious but sensitive prince of a man. Number 4. Altina. Lo and behold, is this another enemy turned party member? Why, yes it is! And in my opinion, Altina has the best arc of those characters on this list. In Cold Steel 2, her inclusion was unremarkable. Apart from showing her teasing side with Reen during the interlude on the Pantagruel, she didn't really do much. The game did show her beginning to work with Reen by request of the Intelligence Division at the end when they took on Lloyd and Risha, and I would not have guessed at the time that that choice would make a huge impact going forward. Then comes Cold Steel 3, when Altina joins Class 7 as one of Reen's students, and she starts to blossom as a character. I love character arcs that can be summarized as cold emotionless characters learn to feel emotions, and Altina fits that to a T. Yuna and Milliam's efforts, along with others, to get her to loosen up were always fun to watch, but it was the growing, almost familial relationship between her and Reen that really sealed the deal. Well, that, and her world-class deadpan snarking ability. Altina delivers some of the best lines of Cold Steel 3 and 4. 
I loved her moments of vulnerability and the journey she takes to discover how she feels beyond what the Black Workshop had intended for her to feel. By the time Cold Steel 4 came around, I cared more about Altina reuniting with Reen than any other character, and the game didn't disappoint when that moment finally happened. Her emotional moments in both games are even better because of how long it took her to find and acknowledge her emotions in the beginning. She retained her amazing sense of humor in her character growth too, which helped push her into one of my favorite characters in the entire series. Number 3, Olivier. Well, he started off as a buffoon, a somewhat lecherous fool who mainly served for comedy which I found to be hit or miss. Clearly, there was more to him with all the mystery around his backstory and his surprising competency and knowledge in certain areas. However, that didn't change the fact that for a good one and a half games, I groaned any time he appeared, since I knew I'd be subjected to bad flirting at the very least. I think his character got better once everyone learned not to take him seriously, just in time for the big reveal of his royalty status. Like with other characters on this list, Olivier has matured over the course of the games, finding purpose in his political rivalry with big bad Gilliath Osborne. Once Olivier revealed himself as Oliver, I feel his character turned around. He started having more serious moments and showed himself to be surprisingly insightful and helpful. Sure, he's still the same old Olivier with his flirtatious ways and flamboyant style, but it's more focused and endearing in later Sky games and Cold Steel. The growing relationship between Shara and Olivier was always a fun development for me since Shara could easily go toe to toe with him, which is exactly what he needs in a partner. Olivier becomes one of the major players in the political machinations on the continent, and I loved seeing what he was up to and what he would do next. I am a big fan of making him a big player on the political stage while also keeping his ability to make an entire room sweat drop from whatever bold statement he says next. At this point, I'd take a sitcom that's just Olivier traveling around with poor Mueller following as he gets into trouble at every turn. That's a major character shift from the man who managed to stop a political beatdown due to sheer awkwardness early on in the series. Number 2, Estelle. Ah, Estelle, how I adore you. Now. Yes, the character I argue is one of the greatest protagonists in video game history is a character I had mixed feelings towards at first. Those of you who watched my Estelle Bright character analysis video might remember me expressing those feelings there as well. Feel free to check it out for a more in-depth character discussion. Suffice to say, Estelle was a bit annoying to start the series. She lacked maturity, patience, and her absent-mindedness was mind-boggling. As the game progressed though, the character can see how she matures, how she takes the new experience she has gained in her travels and puts it into practical use. Her determination and kind-heartedness shine through as she works to rescue Joshua and then Renee from their pasts. Plus, Estelle Bright has likely the best lines in the entire series, and no one can convince me otherwise. Her progress as a bracer and person is so incredible to see, and in part, it's because she started out the way she did that I love her character arc so much. Her development is believable and inspirational. She brought many of these people together and fights so hard for everything she believes in. Estelle is incredible. I was honored to go on the journey of Trails in the Sky with her from the deepest lows to the highest highs, and for these reasons, Estelle Bright, who I initially thought was a mediocre character, became a character I will cherish as long as I am a Trails fan. And yet, she didn't take the top spot on this list. So who did? Number 1, Kevin. Why, looky here, it's the other Trails in the Sky protagonist. Kevin got off to a bad start with me, in part because he got off to a bad start with Estelle. Point for everyone out there, don't flirt with obviously distraught strangers. I mean, before we even know Kevin's actual name, he's already been labeled as insensitive jerk in-game. And while he does prove not to be that as he tries to comfort Estelle, his tendency to evade telling anyone anything about himself and his continued flirting at Estelle made me dislike him. It also made me suspicious of him. I didn't want to be burned again like for Weissman. This dislike kept up pretty much through Sky's second chapter, until right about the end when he helps Joshua overcome his stigma and takes out Weissman. Those actions helped me give him a second chance, and he ran with it in Trails in the Sky the Third. As with quite a few characters on this list, Kevin got a lot better once he had a very good character foil to go around with. And oh look, it's Reese. Wonder if she can help us. 
Kevin's relationship with Reese is delicious. They have an incredible dynamic aided by their long history and contrasting personalities. They both have their flaws and eccentricities, and they complement each other so well, and it's through Reese we learn about Kevin's backstory. And I mean really learn. The reason he has an almost reckless sense of bravado, why he joined the church to begin with, and the full strength of his trauma and self-loathing. The way Kevin gets broken down and then built back up in Sky the Third is a masterclass on character deconstruction and development. Kevin goes through so much in the story you can't help but get invested, wanting to comfort him in his most agonized moments and slap him in his stubborn ones. Kevin is a complex hero that is as self-sacrificing as they come and finally managed to let others help him and that's when he was able to overcome his inner and outer demons. I really hope and expect that we aren't done with Kevin, who has been criminally underused in the series since Guy the Third. A far cry from the insensitive jerk he seemed like at first glance. There we have it. Ten characters who I was either neutral to or disliked when I first met them in the Trail series that I now at least like and in some cases absolutely adore. There is no other video game series that I can make a list like this for, and it's one of the reasons I keep coming back to the Trails series for more of that character writing goodness. If you made it to the end, thank you. Let me know what characters in the Trails series have grown on you over time. I'd really love to hear from all of you regarding this important Trails phenomenon. As always, a great way for you to support this video and my channel in general is commenting and of course giving this video a like to save it from the creature of Gehenna that is the YouTube algorithm. If you want to keep up with any videos I'm making, consider subscribing and I hope to see you all next time. Have a great day and happy gaming.